Hey everyone, today I'm bringing Meta's two AI research efforts closer together to support our long-term goals of building general intelligence, open sourcing it responsibly, and making it available and useful to everyone in all of our daily lives. It's become clearer that the next generation of services requires building full general intelligence, building the best AI assistants, AIs for creators, AIs for businesses, and more, that needs advances in every area of AI, from reasoning to planning to coding to memory and other cognitive abilities. This technology is so important and the opportunities are so great that we should open source and make it as widely available as we responsibly can so that way everyone can benefit. And we're building an absolutely massive amount of infrastructure um, to support this. By the end of this year, we're going to have around 350,000 NVIDIA H100s, or around 600,000 H100 equivalents of compute if you include other GPUs. We're currently training Llama 3, and we've got an exciting roadmap of, of future models that we're going to keep training responsibly and safely too. People are also going to need new devices for AI, and this brings together AI and the metaverse. Because over time, I think a lot of us are going to talk to AIs frequently throughout the day. And I think a lot of us are going to do that using glasses, because glasses are the ideal form factor for letting an AI see what you see and hear what you hear, so it's always available to help out. Ray-Ban Meta Glasses with Meta AI are already off to a very strong start, and overall across all this stuff, we are just getting started. So Mark Zuckerberg just confirmed that they're training Llama 3. He said that he will continue to open source the AI models hinting that AGI will be open source and glasses will be the way that we interact with AI and AGI. Here's kind of what his meta Ray-Ban glasses look like. And interestingly, it just was used by a reporter interviewing Sam Altman in Davos. Here's what he thought of it. As we mentioned on stage, we're trying this out. We'll see how it works. So I am live streaming from my meta Ray-Ban glasses. Uh, this is a first for us, so this should be fun. Um, I'm wearing these uh, glasses. They have an AI assistant built in. You've talked a lot. I about find this very strange for what it's worth. Me too. Who here finds this normal? Not seeing a lot of hands, but we wanted to try it out. Now, there isn't yet too many details about Llama 3. I'll post a video as soon as we have some more info. But in the recent Sam Altman interview recorded by the Meta Ray-Ban glasses, he dropped a few interesting hints about the new model that potentially is brewing behind the scenes GPT-5 Although maybe that's not what it's called. But the, the general principle, I think the thing that matters most is just that it gets smarter. So GPT-2 couldn't do very much. GPT-3 could do more. GPT-4 could do a lot more. GPT-5 will be able to do a lot, lot more. And, and the thing that, or whatever we call it, and the thing that matters most is not that it can, you know, have this new modality or it can solve this new problem. It is the generalized intelligence keeps increasing. And we find new ways to put that into a product. We find new ways to use it. But that's, that, that is the higher order bit. I think that dominates everything else in the importance is that the overall capability of the model, its overall intelligence, its ability to do longer, more complex problems, more accurately, more of them, that is increasing across the board. And that to me is one of the few things that make this totally different from any previous kind of technology. The other interesting point that Sam Altman mentioned is how his vision of how we will interact with AI and AGI, how his vision differs from Mark Zuckerberg. Mark is saying it will look like glasses. Here's Sam Altman's take. The operating system of, of a computer in some sense is, is close to this idea that you're like working inside of a chat experience or an AI experience. And you know, you get to your computer and rather than go open a browser and type in Gmail and look through your emails or whatever, you might just say like, what were my most important emails today? Can you respond to all of those? I'll see these, you know, go find this thing there and send it there. So it's, it is, we're heading towards this new way to kind of do knowledge work. Um, like this is, I think with every great technological revolution, we do get an opportunity to use a computer in a new way. And we don't get all the way there this year, but I do think we'll see people do more and more of their workflow inside of a language model. Next, the reporter asked, about the New York Times lawsuit, New York Times versus OpenAI, and whether or not Sam Altman has a model that's being worked on in the lab that is not being trained on copyrighted data. Do you have a model in the labs that's trained only on stuff that you know you have a right to? Um, I appreciate for sure the effort to get me to talk about a model in the labs, but we never do that. Okay. 
Um. <laughs> now, Sam definitely avoids the question, but here's what he is saying about the data that is used to train the potentially the next generation of models. Now, to give you some context, we are seeing some research suggesting that it's very possible to train very capable AI models using synthetic data. Synthetic data meaning that it was generated by an AI model as opposed to text generated by humans, for example. If this is true, this could mean that, you know, the current models that we have, they were trained on the internet, for lack of a better term, but the future models coming after, they will not need all those texts necessarily to be trained. But the current existing models could produce synthetic data, could produce text and images, etc., and that will be the training data for the future models. And some rumors say that's exactly what OpenAI is doing, although that's all they are, just rumors. The thing we do know is that Orca 2 from Microsoft is showing that using synthetic data can be very effective for training certain types of models, but we have no idea whether OpenAI is doing that or not. But here's Sam Altman talking about the New York Times lawsuit about the copyrighted text, the training data. And my question is, does he seem concerned with having access to third-party data, to having access to copyrighted data? Does it seem like it's crucial for him to have that access in order to continue developing and improving the GPT models? Are you prepared to, if you have to, build a model that's trained only on stuff that's clearly public domain or licensed? Yeah. Again, I think everyone is convinced like my data is so great. We cannot imagine you can make an AI without the New York Times state training data. Now, we're happy to include New York Times training data if the New York Times would like, and there are many other partners who want us to, but we don't need to. And in fact, as these models get smarter and better at reasoning, um, we need less training data. If you just think about your own experience, like Probably no one in this room has read 2,000 biology textbooks. The 2,000th and first, if you had, would not help you that much. Um, what you want is a small amount of super high quality data and to think really hard. So huge amounts of data are going to continue to be important to us. There's lots of good ways we can get that from clearly like open domain data. And then increasingly, I think the models are going to think harder about a smaller amount of known high quality data. And if people don't want us to train on their data, no problem. 